Alex Morgan, welcome to the Professional Hypnotherapist Podcast. Hey, thanks so much for uh, having me. And Alex, you're currently uh, living in and working in Athens in Greece. Yes, it's uh, quite far uh, where I'm from. I'm originally from the U.S. in California. Yeah. So, right. um, you know, oh, sure. I have... Shift. Yeah, I have my whole business and everything in my life here. Um, so I plan to be here uh, for a while in Athens, Greece. I, I love it. I love the sunshine. I kind of follow the sunshine around the world is what I say. Wonderful. Now, Alex, you're a trainer in, a master trainer in uh, hypnosis and uh, neuro-linguistic programming uh, with the ICBCH, which is, I think it's Richard Nongard's organization. Mm -hmm. And um, you specialize, tell us what you specialize in. Um, currently, uh, I've been focusing a lot on helping people reduce stress or recover from burnout. So this has been my focus recently. It's not the only thing I've done since I got into hypnosis and NLP. However, this is most of the content and things I create now is uh, based around this, helping people with this. Okay. And when you say stress and burnout, now we all know that uh, stress, like some stress is necessary for, for life. And indeed, some anxiety is necessary for, for life to provide motivation to us. But particularly now, I suppose, in post-COVID, and indeed during COVID, uh, people have experienced enormous levels of stress, which as you deal with, you mentioned burnout. So tell us what specifically got you into that area of work uh, in the hypnotherapy NLP field. Um, well, specifically with uh, stress, um, it's something I used to deal with a lot. Um, I actually um, deal with hypertension. So uh, that's high blood pressure. Um, and usually if I get stressed or something, uh, because I'm more in tune with how I'm feeling, I can kind of feel it spike up, let's say. Um, so for me, um, I've used many different self-hypnosis and different techniques to um, use this for my own uh, stress. And so I like to just share this type of information with um, people because like you were saying, there's all kinds of stress. And so it just depends on the person specifically what they need um, help with. Because like you said, stress, some of it's good. We actually, if we don't ever feel any sort of stress, we probably wouldn't fall asleep. So we at yeah. least need to have this. So yes, stress is good. We're still human. So um, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how can we actually deal with that to, um, you know, live a fulfilling life. Right, right. Okay. And, you know, for our listeners out there, what are the warning signs that we need to be looking out for? Um, I would say one of them is a lack of sleep. Definitely, if someone's okay. been having a lack yeah. of sleep for a while, they probably have some sort of uh, chronic stress. Yeah. And most, most people, uh, they think that stress will just kind of creep up on them or burnout will just creep up on them. However, yeah. it's been probably lingering for many weeks or many months. So I'd say uh, a recent lack of sleep could be one. If um, someone is getting more irritable around, you know, people at work or in with people that uh, they have relationships with that really matter to them. And it's kind of, um, you know, not going so well because of this, I would say that's another big um, warning sign or just any physical symptom that they feel that's you know, their body's kind of off, if they could really tune into that, I think that yeah. that would be helpful. Because when that happens to me, it just happened this past weekend, to be honest, I wasn't yeah. feeling 100% with my uh, stomach and things like this. So I just said, Hey, enough's enough, I'm going to lay down, I'm going to rest. And after about three hours, I started to feel better. So we need to know when it's time to, to relax and deal with these types of things. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm getting from you is that it's important to listen to your body and listen to what you're experiencing. Yes. You know, but often, and oftentimes, um, Alex, 
uh, you know, people, you know, they they experience this built up emotion, this stress, almost like the pressure cooker, if you want to call it, of of uh, you know, anxiety or whatever. And they oftentimes they don't know what to do. So, what would you suggest? Uh, I mean, if someone is having um, anxiety uh, or stress, the first thing that I think is important is to recognize um, what's going on in their body. Because if they can actually recognize that early, uh, like I said, I had, you know, problem with my stomach and then right mm. away I was like, hey, that's enough. Then it won't kind of snowball and spiral out of control. Um, however, if you, people don't do that, and they don't catch it early, and instead it's lingering. Um, I think that there's, you know, some different uh, self hypnosis things that they could do. Of course, since this is a hypnosis podcast, so there's plenty of ways to relax and create different uh, sensations. Um, I think most people they need to understand the difference between something such as stress or tension and relaxation. Mm-hmm. And you can do that just by really, let's say, clenching your fist for about 10 seconds. That's going to be like the feeling of stress in your body. And then when you let go and you slowly your hand, you know, that's like the soothing sensations of relaxation. So Mm -hmm. we need to learn how to create different sensations in our body, because I think a lot of people, they get used to stress. They run a strategy in their mind of I'm stressed, I'm stressed. So why not have a different way to physically change this that um, they can do. So um, one thing that I do, it's called autogenic training. Yeah. Um, and I actually have a, a free PDF that all the listeners can get. That's five okay. different ways that you can yeah. let go of stress in two minutes per less per day. And it tells mm-hmm. you the exact instructions to do that. And all they're doing is creating different sensations in the body. They're just producing different sensations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I'm getting from you is that basically we're, we are initiating uh, the control within ourselves rather than oftentimes, you know, our mind just runs away with ourselves, you know, it, 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 it uh, just gallops ahead of us. Now, um, you are, we'll get back to more of that later. You are, as we mentioned previously, uh, living and working in in Athens, Greece. Um, and you do a lot of training, I believe, from uh, Greece. I presume, do you speak Greek? Um, I'm learning. Um, I, can under, I can understand it a lot better than I actually um, speak it. It's probably more of a limiting belief I should deal with, but I can understand it a lot and i'll reply with what i know or i'll just reply in english sometimes um (laughs) yeah (laughs) kelly right now would be like hello messy mary which is like right after lunchtime yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. um okay and tell us so what type of training do you do specifically Um, so that anyone out there who is listening and watching this you know, if they feel that they or believe that they, you could help them, well, they know exactly where where, where to go. Yeah. So um, they would go to um, my website. It's AthensNLP.com. Or they can send me an email, Alex yeah. at AthensNLP.com. Um, essentially, I train people to either become a, a hypnosis practitioner or a NLP practitioner, or they can uh, do both. And we also teach the method of timeline therapy. So that's used for getting rid of uh, major negative emotions, as well as limiting um, beliefs. However, if someone really wants to, um, you know, become a hypnotist, the training's great for that. I personally Mm -hmm. went to these trainings when I had uh, stress and anxiety and things in my life. And I want to do fix myself because I was Mm -hmm. thinking, hey, there's got to be something out there that can help me. So I always say people should come to the training for themselves first. And then once they get all the nice tools and everything, then they can kind of share them with the the world. Because I, I do believe that, you know, anyone studying the mind specifically in terms of, uh, you know, the hypnotherapeutic aspect and the, the hypnosis aspect of 
mind and and uh, motivation yeah their whole perspective is opened up they have a different perspective uh, on on the world and uh, indeed talking about perspectives uh, in your opinion how how important are perspectives well they're really important i mean if you see let's take stress for example if oh. something happens maybe something happens to someone and they're totally stressed yet they're telling me hey you know i have this project and it's you know due in a week but they're stressing about it that whole week and let's say they tell me and i'm like well you know i would just get started on it slowly slowly prepare and finish maybe i wouldn't get stressed so our perspective on anything could really change how we you know view our reality the whole world around us so it's yeah. I mean, it's really what changes everything, I think. And hypnosis or training can definitely uh, do that for a student or a client. Yeah, yeah. And um, what type of clients uh, or do you work with? Or, or maybe perhaps what what speci- you mentioned you do training in hypnosis and NLP. Do you work with any businesses in terms of what uh, using NLP for business? Yeah, NLP. Uh, for business, uh, mostly the communication models of it. So how they can have really efficient uh, conversations um, at work that, you know, make their save time and make them more productive so they can make uh, more money. So I would say this is one use in bit or in sales, of course, um, you yeah. can always use different uh, language models or different um, notice different things in creating rapport or the person's physiology to create that connection. Um, so mm-hmm. you can get more sales as well. This is something that I do focus on too, to be honest. Excellent. Yeah. So, for example, business owner out there, um, how specifically would NLP, can you give me an example of how uh, neuro-linguistic programming could help them? If it's maybe specifically with regard to communicating or communication. Okay. Um So, I mean, if someone, a business owner comes to me and they have, uh, you know, a problem of communication uh, in the business, chances are if they're the business owner, uh, they're probably part of this uh, problem. So, so we need to kind of loosen up how they loosen up their perspective, kind of how you brought up earlier. They need to loosen up their perspective on everything and first have them understand that they need to take responsibility for whatever problem is going on in their business. Because if they don't take responsibility, it's going to be hard to get through to them on everything else. So that's the first thing we need to do. And then we need to work with them and give them all the, you know, different communication tools and make sure that they're satisfied. And then I would usually probably go out to the, um, you know, make sure to please them and then go out to the, to the team and teach them, uh, the things as well. Uh, but I probably work on some limiting beliefs and stuff as well uh, within a business so everyone can get rid of certain limiting beliefs and get on the same page. Mm-hmm. Language is so important and the words that we use are so important. And to what extent, in your opinion, uh, can we become entrapped by our language? Well, in the uh, Hypnosis and NLP, we say, uh, say it the way you want it. Mm. Um, so the the most common example I would say is probably a lot of people get entrapped with using the negatives. So things like don't or can't yeah. Yeah. and things like this, when the unconscious mind isn't actually registering these words. So if someone says don't fall or mm. don't expect this, they're actually telling themselves to fall or expect this because the unconscious mind doesn't pick up on it. So I would say this, if they can change it to a more, uh, have a positive spin, reframe it a bit, I think this will kind of start to have their world change for them. Sort of to be more outcome oriented. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. In other words, what, what you want to happen as opposed to what you don't want to happen. Correct. I think this is probably the, one of the easiest ways that people get kind of entrapped in their mm. language and thinking is thinking like this. And it's a okay. simple change. Can you give an example of that, uh, Alex? Yeah, I mean, if someone's saying that they, um, you know, if someone's telling me to do something, 
and they say, hey, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't drive the car like this, yeah. for example. I'm immediately thinking, well, I'm going to drive the car like they told me. So then I have to go in and then I have to take a whole extra step. Like, hey, how do I actually want to drive the car or turn the car, whatever it is? And then yeah. I could do it. But it takes a whole extra step knowing I know only because I know these things. If someone doesn't know these things, then that's how people get trapped in this thinking because they don't know the way out of it. So that would just be a simple everyday example of someone just giving you instructions about driving or something like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you are the author of uh, three books and you're currently writing your fourth book. So tell us about that. Tell us about uh, your, the, the, the books that you have published. Um, it's funny because I never... I never really had um, like thinking I'm going to be a published author or anything like this. And then once I got into, uh, you know, a subject that I enjoyed, I just figured, hey, why not just start writing about it and putting my thoughts on paper? Because everyone has a book or two inside of them if they just want to um, put it out there. So the first book I wrote, it's a it's a guide to um, how to let go of negative emotions. So that's yeah. the title, How to Let Go of Negative Emotions. So it really goes deep into uh, what the, ma na the major negative emotions are. And so yeah. you can recognize them and how you can release them. Uh, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt. And certain people will have major emotions depending on, you know, maybe regret or things like yeah. this as well, depending on their situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it tells you different things that you can do to let go of negative emotions would be, that would be my first um, book. And uh, my second one, it's pro hypnosis scripts. So it just has a lot of uh, hypnosis scripts for different things. So how you can achieve things like confidence, um, weight loss, mm -hmm. stress, uh, less in stress, stuff like that. And uh, my third the, one. Well, can I just uh, cycle back a little bit with regard to the hypnosis scripts? Yeah. Um, you know, everybody's experience is different and everybody operates out of a, let's say, to use an expression, a different paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, um, like to what extent, you know, um, are hypnosis scripts useful or can are they useful for everybody or does, do you use the same script for everybody? You know what I'm getting uh, at? Yeah, me personally. Um, when I work with someone because they have their own paradigm or another way of putting it too is um, every kind of phrase or word or picture they have, it's all like a metaphor, a story, their own story. Yeah. So yeah. I usually just start off with a blank piece of paper um, and write down all the keywords and phrases that they're yeah. using. Because when I use those later for them, it's really good. They're going to be like, wow, that really makes the change for me. And you could see that, you know, on their face, of course, when we're, um watching them i think scripts um especially when let's say first starting out it, it helps you get ideas it helps you get uh, creative i would never let's say uh you know read one uh, word for word because you want to keep in mind um the client however i think yeah. for someone who's just starting out it gives them a good base and a good guideline to kind of know how to structure things and how to, um, you know, when to use certain things or different visualizations or metaphors or whatever it is, okay. it gives them sort of like a, a baseline and a structure to use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because everybody, um, everybody uh, has a different, applies a different meaning to different words, you know, and uh, that's, that's something that um, I think is important that we as therapists, hypnotherapists, hypnotherapists specifically, that we are aware that, you know, not all scripts are suitable for every client. Correct. Um, because let's say I'm at, I'm working with someone and I say, hey, yeah. like, how will you know, uh, you know, when you achieved your goal or whatever yeah. it is, the phrase that they're going to use is going to be different from the phrase I'm going to be using, different from the phrase you're going to be using. So, of course, if we 
know what questions to ask and things like this, we can extract the information. Yeah. However, if we have a, say a script where you can kind of plug and play with different things, you could then use some little patter from a script, then also put in their words to really freshen up things for them mm -hmm. because that's what they're paying us yeah. for essentially. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody's experience is different and everybody has different uh, needs and wants. And it's 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 probably the the role of the therapist to you know meet and match the client where they're at and to bring them or take them to where they want to go. What would you say about that? That's a very good point um, because the client, essentially, what we're doing is connecting them to the resources that they have inside themselves to actually solve their problem. So if I was the client, my resources may be much different from a client that I'm working with. So we need to, you know, kind of shake up how they view the world right now enough to where it opens them up so they can really go inside and find like, ah, I already have this. I know how to yeah, do it. And then yeah. once they start making yeah. those unconscious connections, everything yes. gets easier. Yeah. I like, I like, I love the expression, shake them up because Oftentimes, yeah. <laughs> you know, we become very stuck, you know, st stuckness. And this is almost as if it's like a, a solid block, you know, and you need to break open that to sh to shatter that, uh, you know, to go back to beliefs, you know, to shatter yeah. that belief they may have, you know, and and shake it up in such a way that well, for, for momentarily, they, they almost feel as if they're they don't know where they're at, where they're at. But then the pieces just come back together in a new and a much more enhancing way. Yeah. And then they may even be um, like have a little confusion because they haven't necessarily learned yeah. something like this before. They haven't heard something we said yeah. before. Yeah. And the, the good thing about confusion is, is once they're at confusion, that's usually right after is when they have a breakthrough or they're going to learn something that's very insightful for them. And the great thing yeah. about hypnosis, they may learn something, let's say today, right now, as we're recording this, yeah. however, they'll be able to use it next week, next month, uh, yeah. next year, as long as it's useful for them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's wonderful. And go back to the books now, the, the, the next book, uh, the, the third book you have written is Uh, the third one is the uh, transformative power of suggestion. So okay. this one, uh, it's actually going to be, title. yeah, this one's going to be part of a new series I'm writing. So it's going to be the transformative power of different things. Um, this one was suggestion. So this one is all about how we can create suggestions. So even if someone's not a hypnotist, they could read mm -hmm. this book and it's a complete guide how they could create very successful language patterns that can change the thinking of themselves uh -huh. and yeah. others. So they'll have ways to influence and persuade others uh, in a way that's beneficial for them and the other person. So that's what this one's all about. And of course, we all know about the power of advertising, particularly yes. TV advertising, you know, and radio advertising. And, you know, to, to what extent, in your opinion, uh, Alex, you know, are, are we being manipulated, as it were? Well, we, I would say we're, we could be manipulated as much as we allow it to happen. So actually, if you read the book, and you understood some of the language patterns, you would know what these advertising, uh, advertisements are doing on TV or social media. And you would probably be able to sniff them out a bit and recognize yeah what yeah. they're doing and you'd probably be less and less uh manipulated so yeah i often think that you know there are many uh what would i call it uh, reputable uh charities out there you know particularly particularly when you hear the charities maybe for some who advertise maybe they were saying that there was a famine somewhere you know and then you hear the expression if you believe that children shouldn't suffer you know this and they're tapping into you know, your beliefs and your empathy. And it's very, mm -hmm. very powerful. No, I'm by, by all means, I'm saying, by all means, support these charities. I'm just giving an example 
uh, or clarifying what I'm getting at here. What's your take yeah. on that? Well, they'll say that and then they'll say something. They only they'll only need one dollar per day or something. Yeah. So yeah. it's almost like, um, you know, in NLP, we have the reframing and sleight of mouth. It's almost like you're then reframing yeah. into the the person's values to guilt them yeah. a little bit, to get them mm-hmm. to be, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel so bad. I might as well do this. So I think they're doing a bit of this, whether or not it's, you know, ethical or not, of course, is would be why you would, you know, give money or not. So right. that's why yeah. people, when they give money, they like to give money and also things that they believe in because mm. it, like you said, yes. beliefs. So I think that's yes. important to consider. Yeah. yeah. Now your fourth book is in the making. Tell us about that. Uh, this one's going to be the transformative power of NLP. So it'll be the second book in the series um, i'm writing it now i have i think like 130 something pages so i'll yeah. probably finish writing it soon and it'll be released i think like early 2024 i just like to give myself time to get things yeah. set how i want it yeah. um yeah. but this one will be great for um anyone who has no idea uh what nlp is um i go through some of the history and the practice of Uh, modeling so when we find someone who does something excellent we want to be able to install that in ourselves so we can do it excellent too so i Uh, go into that yeah can you clarify that forgive my interruption with regard to modeling so that just to sort of maybe we would slow that down and maybe just give us give us an example of modeling or what what do you mean by modeling okay Um, So modeling is essentially taking uh, behavior that someone does in a really excellent way. And Mm -hmm. we want to be able to understand how that they do it. We don't need to know so much what they do. We want to understand how they do it in their head, what beliefs, what beliefs they have about it, what they value when they're doing uh, this thing. How do they get feedback? So then if we were to do this, we need to know like, well, how do we get feedback? What should we believe? And then we can empower ourselves with all of these um, mm. things. So I go into a little bit about modeling because yeah. let's say I want to learn how to um, you know, start a podcast, for example. Well, I'm going to go to someone that I think has a really excellent podcast and I can find out how that how it is that they do what they do. And then I would follow the same steps that they told me. I would believe the same things about podcasting that they do that I could, let's say, have a successful podcast or whatever it is. Yeah. And then I could do it. Or if I wanted to get really good at hypnosis, I would go to someone who I think is excellent at this and have them yeah. teach me what to do. So the the whole purpose of modeling too is to find out how someone does it. Does it? So then you could also teach others, hey, I found something yeah. really great. Let me show yeah. you how to do this too. I think it's... Yeah. Sharing knowledge with the world is what's awesome about it. Mm. It's it's like you know, um, it's the the structure of what what they do. It's not necessarily the content within it, but the structure. And you build it's like and building any house or or a building where you you build the the frame, and then you you embellish upon that if 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 that's the correct word. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, I think that's a great way of looking at it, the the structure, because it's we're finding out like their strategy, which is essentially yeah. like what's going on in their head when they're doing yeah. this thing. Because yeah. if you knew like, hey, how to start a podcast, OK, probably get a camera, get a microphone, like everyone could find this information. But someone who's really good at it, like how are they actually you know, doing it, making it so successful. That's the, like the real knowledge, the wisdom yeah. that we want to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's important. Now, um, tell me something, Alex, about yourself that not many people know. Hmm. Not many people know. Well, I'm left-handed for one. Everyone <laughs> knows that, but that's a, okay. a rare thing. I was a, yeah. uh, I was a real strict vegetarian for about three years as well. So what happened? I moved to Greece. And um, if anyone's ever seen the movie, my big fat Greek wedding, when uh, he's, he was a vegetarian too. So I can easily relate to this. And he goes to the house. We're like, okay, well you can still eat chicken or you can still eat this. Right. So you have to, I had to kind of 
learn and adapt, let's say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't eat uh, all meat, but I eat things to kind of blend in and make it uh -huh. easy for everyone, let's say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. Thank you for that. I, I just like to show the spanner in the works, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now, um, okay. The world of hypnosis, hypnotherapy, and, uh, and neurolinguistic programming. Um, if if somebody's, you know, somebody out there didn't know anything about these fields and they have a particular issue, say for example, if, if we come back to stress and burnout, or maybe uh, even sleep issues, or even depression. So, how can hypnotherapy and hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming. How can it help me if I need to sleep better maybe or to change something that I, uh, I've been battling with for many years? Mm. Yeah, so I think the actually another thing that many people don't know is I've almost been uh, sober now for 10 years. So that's something I like to hang my hat Excellent. on a bit. Congratulations. Um, I just yeah. thought of that. I was like, I should have said that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the The way it really, I think hypnosis can really help is depending on the type of um, hypnosis, you know, some people progress to cause, uh, some don't. So we could find yeah. out the cause, like what is the cause of this issue and then release that. And that often re removes all the emotions, uh, negative mm -hmm. emotions that you have um, yeah. with that. Or we could more focus on how specifically are you not doing something correctly in your mind that's giving you the results that we yeah. don't want. And so we figure out a way we work together by asking some questions, doing different sessions, different techniques of yeah. how can we give you a new strategy so you can get the results that you actually want. Okay, so you know, say... you strategy. You know, tell, tell me now, for the benefit of, of our viewers and listeners, what is a strategy? A strategy is a, it's essentially a series of different steps that uh -huh. we're going to do inside of our head um, that leads to a specific and consistent um, result. So someone who might not be sleeping well, maybe mm -hmm. they get in the bed and they're immediately uncomfortable and they toss and turn. Then they start telling themselves like, well, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. So that self-talk is part of their strategy. And that's probably why they're not getting the results. However, mm -hmm. let's say someone gets in bed and thinks like, Hey, this is the most comfortable bed I have that I've ever slept in. Obviously this is a very simple example. And then they have positive self-talk about, you know, um, maybe having that condition response of right when they hit the pillow, it's relaxing yeah. for them. And they tell themselves, Hey, I'm going to have a great night's sleep. So this would be just a few steps as a, of a strategy that someone could change to uh, get better sleep. Of course, a lot more would go into this um, than saying a few things, but that's just an example of a strategy. Mm. What I'm getting from you, Alex, is uh, there's, there's a process for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, everything uh, that we do. Yeah. There's a process in it. So we have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Would that be correct to say? Yes, and I think that's, that's a very good point because the end, of course, we want to be able to actually exit the strategy so we know, hey, this is done or this is complete because if we yeah. have a beginning, then we get to the middle and then we keep looping back and not being able to exit it, well, then that could actually lead to the problems you mentioned, like stress or lack of sleep or depression, burnout, whatever it is. Because if we can't exit the strategy, we're just going to be ruminating on those same thoughts and steps, and we're not going to actually get anywhere. So that's a very important yeah. point that it needs yeah. to have an end. We need to be able to exit to achieve what we want. Yeah. And sometimes I like to think of it in terms of, you know, if you have in, in, in the States to have uh, guns, we don't have them here in Ireland. Uh, um, if you take the firing pin out of a gun and you pull the trigger, what happens? Uh, well, nothing. it's not going to. Yeah, it's not going to. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So I suppose that's what we're doing in, in terms of therapy, where either 
taking the firing pin out or replacing with something much more, you know, that acceptable. And uh, the outcome is different. But the, the very thanks very much for that. Um, now, the what motivated you to write the book, this series of books on the transformative power, specifically, for, for example, of uh, NLP? You know, I just like to, uh, I enjoy writing, to be honest. I get in like a nice, um, kind of like into a nice state of flow. And I just love to share uh, information uh, with the world. Um, I mean, books, it's a very cheap way to learn a lot of things. I, I'm reading constantly. So it kind of involves like my passion of reading and writing and also sharing information uh, that I'm passionate. And as I'm writing, I'm like, oh, wow, I can put it this way. It's kind of like a one-time show. Every time you do a training or a podcast, you might say something different than you do next time. Yeah. So I always find myself kind of learning new things um, as well. And I just want to share that with um, everyone else and also show people that writing a book is kind of, it's not a huge task. Like a lot of people think it's actually easier than many would think. So I kind of mm -hmm. like to put that belief out into the world as well. Okay. In the world of NLP, who are your favorite authors? Um, I so have a lot of the um, the older books. Milton Erickson, even though he's not necessarily, let's say, the one who wrote the book, they come from interviews and things. Um, yeah, they modeled him, for, as we say. Yeah, they modeled him. So Patterns, but NLP 1 and 2, I have it on yeah. behind me um, over yeah. there. Um, yeah. Just it depends, but a lot of those, like the classics, are the ones that um, mm -hmm. I like. And Richard Nongard, yeah. of course, you mentioned. I've read. Uh, he has a lot of good books. I've read probably twenty of them, if I had to right. guess how many. So mm -hmm. I would say he's one of my favorites as far as now. Right, right. And we mentioned we touched on it earlier. Um, Heimline therapy. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I think it was was it um, was it Tad James? I think has written the definitive book on that. Yeah, Tad James, who unfortunately is no longer with us. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so he he was curious. Uh, Tad James, he's uh, he was a fantastic uh, NLP trainer. Has the Tad James company, um, but he was curious about how people actually like store emotions in the body. And how those can relate uh, to time. So how our unconscious mind, because it's the domain of our emotions, it releases emotions. And then usually what people do is they shove them back down. They're like, I'm not ready to deal with this yet. So he was really yeah. interested in if this is happening, how yeah. can we actually get rid of these negative emotions? It doesn't mean we'll never feel them again. However, when mm -hmm. they come up in the future, we'll have a different story in our mind about mm -hmm. these. So I'd say that's kind of like the biggest picture of timeline therapy without going into yeah. too many details no 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 but it is it is a powerful intervention uh, yeah i use it to, uh, with i use it all the time with clients it's very powerful yeah yeah um and is there anything else now at this juncture uh, that you'd like to you know get across to to our uh, listeners because i always say to you know people coming on the podcast podcast don't leave here without saying what you want to say. <laughs> so what do you I, want to say? What's your final parting, you know, um, comments or uh, words of wisdom for our listeners of yours? Um, yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, you having me on. And I've said a lot of what I wanted to say. I don't really rehearse too many things in my head. I kind of just go with the flow. However, mm -hmm. one of the, the biggest things for me uh, recently that I think would be really valuable for people is um, they need to just find things uh, that they enjoy uh, doing. So for example, like, yeah. you know, if you didn't enjoy making this podcast, you know, then why would you want to keep uh, doing it? Because in my business, I was creating content that I didn't necessarily enjoy doing. So I started finding like, oh, I can write books, or I can do this. So Within whatever it is you do, find something that you truly enjoy doing. And over time, because you enjoy doing it, your results will be consistent and you'll, you know, bring people in who are also happy to, um, yeah. you know, sh share the knowledge or success with you. That's how you usually find the clients, I think, because there's nothing 
like stopping you. Yeah. And as you said, find something that, that you enjoy doing. And the, the, the other side of that is if you enjoy doing something, you're usually very good at it. And when you're very good at it, you're also, you're happy. You're at your happiest. Yeah, you'll you'll feel good about it. And that's, I always say, one of the biggest benefits of hypnosis or just doing what you enjoy is essentially feeling good. So who yeah. wouldn't want to feel good as much as possible? Yeah. We don't have yeah. to, you know, pain can help us. However, yeah. why not have a fair amount of pleasure uh, Absolutely. in our reality? Absolutely. Great. Now, um, Alex, uh, how can uh, our listeners contact you? Um, they can go to my website, uh, www.athensnlp.com. So just the city Athens and then NLP. Um, mm-hmm. They can shoot. They can shoot me an email, Alex at AthensNLP.com, or they can also find me on Instagram. I'm pretty active there. Um, my username there is at Alex Morgan Hypnosis. So I would say those are probably the easiest way uh, to find me and get in touch with me. And, you know, I love talking about this stuff. So even if it's to to chat or anything, uh, Uh definitely reach out. Absolutely. And and it's no harm having a chat. If somebody wants to, you know, talk about something, they can, you know, reach out to you. And I'm sure you'll get back to them as soon as possible. Yeah, I think uh, the thing is, too, a lot in the, let's say, in the hypnosis and coaching world, uh, the messages that people send us, they maybe never told this to someone else before that they might have a problem or something that they uh, want yeah. to work on. So I think what you said of, you know, just the fact that we actually reply and show compassion and, you know, maybe we don't end up working with them or maybe we do. Uh, it's a huge step for that person to to reach out. So I encourage anyone to, you know, please reach out to whoever you want, uh, you know, you look up to or whoever you want help from, um, you know, because most of us are willing to show um, compassion when we truly like to help people. So I think that's a big uh, point as well. Excellent. So Alex Morgan, uh, international master hypnotherapist and master NLP uh, trainer. Uh, Thank you so much for being with me today on the Professional Hypnotherapist Podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Had a lot of fun. Bye for now. Bye-bye.